All right, folks, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and today we're going to talk about sewing machines. We're not going to actually build a project or anything. We're just going to talk about sewing machines, how to use them, some of the basic stuff. Um, I know when I first uh, got my first sewing machine, I sat there for probably six months and sat on my stitching pony and used the table on my sewing machine to hold my thread while I hand stitch stuff because I was afraid of my sewing machine. So let's let's just take that away. Let's take away the fear, take away the animosity and the worry about it, and let's just learn how to use these things, okay? Now, the sewing machine I'm gonna be using in today's video, this is a Cobra Class 18 machine. I have a size 20 needle in it and a size 138 thread, okay? Now, um, a little bit about this machine. If you have a smaller machine, everything we're gonna learn today is, is going to be relevant to what we're doing. It doesn't matter what model this is, what exact you know um, thread size and stuff like that. None of that matters as far as what we're going to learn in this video, okay? So we'll go over a couple of things though here and what we're looking at, okay? So here I have my reverse lever. That's what makes the machine go uh, do my back stitches. Okay, this dial right here is for my, uh, I call it my selector switch, but that's just a, you know, army gun term. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's my stitch length adjustment knob. Right here's my hand wheel. There's where I uh, wind my bobbins. And then over here's all the tensioning stuff, okay? And we're going to do a whole little segment about tension. Um, it'll be its own little video, talking about thread tension. Um, because it is something that baffles a lot of folks and it doesn't have to be difficult. It can be a very easy uh, thing to worry about, but it, again, it baffles a lot of folks, so we're, we're going to go over it too. Okay, so I'm going to reposition the camera and uh, we're going to um, we're gonna get on this and we're going to learn some basic sewing techniques, how to start a st stitch, how to stop a stitch, how to go all the way around something, and then learn a few seams. Um, and that's, that's it right there. That's going to get you going and get you feeling comfortable on your machine. And, uh, yeah. So I'll reposition the camera. We'll be right back. All right. So here we are. Here's the, the business end of the machine right here. The bobbin is down in that little hole there. Okay. My top thread's coming down through the needle and everything's threaded correctly and all that. Um, that is something that would be very sewing machine specific, how you thread it and everything. Um, once you've threaded three or four different sewing machines, you pretty much understand how most of these big industrial machines would thread. Um, <clears throat> home machines and machines that have computerized stuff on them, they still baffle me, but I, I got a pretty good handle on these. All right, so I, um, we cut out a bunch of, uh, this is some four to five ounce uh, cowboy leather, um, and we're just going to use, we've, we've got several of these business card size pieces that we'll use um, for today's demonstrations, okay? But the first thing we're gonna learn is starting and stopping our stitch, okay? Sounds like it's simple to some people, but to other people, they're like, what do, what do I do here? So here we are, okay? Now, I didn't show you, down here, my knee is pushing the, um, the lift for the uh, presser foot. Back here is also a little switch for the same thing. You can pull it up. That little handle right there i hardly ever use the handle i just honestly when i first bought one of these machines i had it like three years before i even knew that that was back there so i'm not in a habit of using it very often i do use it sometimes if i have to really move a lot of leather around down here and get a good positioning and stuff it's just easier to to, to be able to leave that in the up position as opposed to constantly holding it with my knee but anyway i'm gonna lift my uh, my leather up here okay and i'm gonna set it in and to start my stitch is very simple. We always start it off going backwards. I say always. This is gonna be a straight line stitch. It's gonna go from one end of this piece of leather to the other end of this piece of leather. Then it's gonna stop, okay? But we have to tie off the ends of our threads, much like when we're hand sewing, when we back stitch or over stitch something, um, we have to do the same thing here, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do, I use my elbow over here to hold down my reverse lever, all right? And I'm gonna start out going backwards and I'm gonna do two to three stitches going backwards. So we'll just go slow. Um, the other very important thing to do is hold these two threads when you start out. If you're doing a large project and you got this whole table covered with leather or whatever, it's most important that you hold the top um, 
thread, but it, 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 it can be beneficial, of course, to hold them both. And what that does is that keeps the top thread from being sucked down into the bobbin area when the, when the shuttle hook grabs that thread. Okay, so anyway, we did one back stitch, two back stitches. We'll go ahead and do three back stitches. Now, while the needle's still down in the leather, I let the reverse lever go. Okay, now I'm gonna go forward. And it's gonna go right back into those same stitch holes. All right, and then we complete our stitch. We're gonna go all the way to the other end of this piece of leather. And once we've reached wherever we want our last stitch to be, we're gonna hold the leather down or the reverse lever down again, and we're gonna do back stitches one more time. Okay, now anytime I do any kind of a transition, such as a turn or going from forward to backward or something, I try to stop it with the needle down in the leather. Okay, uh, it just it, it helps it to have the correct placement. Now I'm gonna show you something. That's right here. See where it goes up and down. That's what pulls your top thread back up out of the bobbin area. Okay. I have guys that, I mean, they've owned a sewing machine for years and they don't understand why sometimes when they pull their leather out of the machine, there's three threads coming up from the bobbin area. Well, what it is, is if you didn't stop this with the machine with this in the up position, it doesn't pull that thread up out of the bobbin area. Okay. So, um, this, this completes my last stitch is basically what it does. Now what I'm gonna do is, bring the camera back down so you can see my leather a little bit. I'm going to use my knee to lift my presser foot and that's also going to put a little spacer in the tension discs here to release tension on this top thread because it's very, very tight, okay? And what I like to do is I'll take my finger right here under the take up arm and pull a few inches of thread out and then I can easily pull my, my, my project out from under the machine. If you don't, um, pull the thread out here first and you just pull the machine pull the, uh, the all that tension against your needle you're risking bending your needle and you don't want to do that okay so there you go there's your first sewing machine lesson right there we uh, we we did a straight line stitch and then a back stitch at the, the beginning and end okay now let's get into something else so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way around the project Okay, and if we're going all the way around a project, we don't need to do our back stitches at the beginning or the end. Because what we're going to do is go all the way around the project and then simply sew back over our first few stitches. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, I've, I've got my leather where I want it. I am going to hold my, uh, my, my threads with my hand here. Get you back down on there. Okay, and I'm going to just simply stitch. Okay, now when I get to this corner, this is something that a lot of people are, are um, I'm not going to say baffled by, but it, it amazes a lot of people when I do this. Um, Al Bain taught me how to do this. Now, right here, this needle position, if I go one more stitch, it's going to be too far. If I don't go one more stitch, I've, I'm not going far enough. So here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take and rotate my hand wheel until the needle is almost touching the leather again okay so the needle came down it came up and it went back down and it is just barely over the surface of the leather okay now i'm going to very gently press on my reverse lever and do you see how that moves my needle placement back some i'm going to press on it and i can press it down as far as i want to put that needle exactly back where i want it and then once it gets to where I want it, I'm going to use, you can either use the hand wheel or your pedal and go ahead and complete that stitch. Okay, now I'm at a corner. I need to turn this corner. Okay, so I want to, when I turn a 90 degree or any sharp corner, I want my needle to go all the way down and then I want it to be started back on its way back up. That ensures that the shuttle hook has, has grabbed the top thread. Okay, then I'm gonna lift with my, my, uh, my knee and then turn my, my leather, and then I'm just gonna simply keep stitching. Just like that, okay? So there we go. Um, again, the needle's gone all the way down, come up a little bit, I'm gonna lift with my knee, do another 90 degree turn, keep on a stitching. 
Now, I'm going to show you that little reverse, their little half stitch trick one more time. Okay, we're going to get the needle all the way, almost touching the leather again. And then we'll press that reverse lever as much as we need to. Whoop, I think I put my needle all the way to the leather. Press that reverse lever as much as we need to because this presser foot's holding the leather down. So the center foot and the needle are allowed to move freely. Okay, so I'll press that down a little bit, get it right where I want it as far as, you know, front, back there and then complete the stitch, okay? Another 90 degree turn. All right, last 90 degree turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, all the way, um, took the needle all the way to the bottom and then brought it back up a little bit. I'm gonna lift with my presser, lift my presser foot with my knee, turn my leather 90 degrees and I'm gonna come back. Now, I am back to where my original stitch was, okay? So what I need to do is, I need this needle to go back into that same hole that it went into the very first stitch. And I may have to do my little trick to do it or it may just fall right into it. Sometimes you get lucky and it falls right in. That time we got pretty lucky. I just slightly moved the leather a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna take and just over stitch three stitches or so and then I'll complete my stitch. Okay, so once again, I'll run my hand wheel until I know the take up arm has gone all the way back up. I will lift my presser foot and I'll pull that thread out a few inches. And then I pull my project out from under the machine. Okay. And then I just snip it off. So that is the basics of starting and stopping your stitch or going all the way around a project and completing your stitch on the other side. Okay, um, we're going to do another video in just a minute and we're going to talk about different seams and uh, how they work. So play the next one if you want to see more.